Okay, my name's Bill Helms. I work at Dominion. I'm an adapter builder. And uh, today I'm going to rebuild uh, a valved brake adapter, uh, number 351X 7831. It's, uh, it's also a, a dual level valved adapter, but uh, its dual level functions are being used in this particular situation. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to rebuild it show you how to properly lubricate it, put it together, and uh, rebuild it before uh, it gets run out. So I'm going to start right now with, uh, I've taken an adapter apart and I've cleaned up all the parts in a cleaning tank with some uh, um, cleaning solutions and stuff to get uh, a lot of the old greases off. They had the wrong grease on this one. It was causing uh, some of the adapter o-rings to swell up. Now, when I rebuild it, I'm only going to use this uh, particular grease that we recommend for all our adapters. We can use them for all of our adapters. And it's the PST407 and it's from G-Man. It's uh, got a green tint to it and the consistency of applesauce. Doesn't smell too good either. <laughs> now, I'm going to start out with uh, I have a call out print here. And on one side, it calls out, it shows you all the detail numbers. And it shows you where they go on the particular adapter, so where you can put the o rings and stuff. Some people work off of a, a red kit. Some people work off of a print like this. Uh, a few people out uh, might just take an adapter apart and match seals up as they take them off and set them off on the side next to each other. But I'm going to work off of a print today. All right, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do what a, a sub assembly. I'm going to look through here. Because on the print here, it shows me that uh, this here is a, a 2 one o ring going in right here, right here, and right inside the sleeve. This here is one of our uh, details. It's a cylinder. It's marked down right here on the print as uh, detail 11,000,000,000,000. This also has a detail number. It's an 11 million 598 sleeve, and uh, the manifold has a detail number. They're all marked off right here. It's an 11 million 1238. So I'll look through. I've got most of my seals are marked. A lot of the times you get a bag of seals and you just got to match them up with the old ones. I'll show you that as we go along. But I'm going to go through here and pull out a 2 130 which I've already got a bag marked, pre-marked with three of them here. And when I pull it out, I'm going to set a rag right down here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this lubricant here and I'm going to put it on the O-rings. It's not really thick. I kind of keep it kind of thin. Yeah, you're just sort of rotating them yeah, around. And rotating them around. And I just get enough on my fingers to... Now Thanks. you can use rubber gloves with this. I've been using it for a while. It hasn't really bothered me or anything. But if you prefer, you could get rubber gloves before you do it and put them on. Then I'm going to slowly start putting them in where they go. The 2130 goes up here inside of the sleeve right off to the side there and at the same time I know that there's an o-ring gonna move up and down on this sleeve on the side so I'm gonna put a thin coating of grease on the side up here on the o-ring area where the o-ring slides so now I've already pre-lubed that part up now on the cylinder, I'll take the 130, 
I put it right here on the inside. Make sure that's lubed up. And I know that the piston, when assembled, is going to have a seal rubbing up against the inside right here, where my finger is, on that wall. So I'll lube that wall up a little bit and get it ready. There's a spring that's going to be riding right here on this wall. So I'll put a little bit of lubricant right there to help the spring move. Now, now I'll take the other one, 30, and I'll put it right here on the inside wall where it goes. Now it shows that right up here. On this print, the 130 E O ring goes in this spot on the manifold right here. The other 130 goes right here on the inside of the cylinder. And the other 130 goes on the inside wall right here on the sleeve. So if the O-rings come in a bag like that, now I'll pull out, uh, to complete the cylinder, I'll pull out an O-ring that's marked down here for the jaws, it's a 2032 EPR. Again, I lube up all the O-rings before I put them on. Now I'll set that one right here on the cylinder. We're going to be ready for the jaws. Now the sleeve's complete, and I need one more piece for the cylinder, which is going to be a slide ring marked off here onto the side. Now, I got enough lubricant on my fingers for the slide. The slide ring doesn't really need a lot of lubricant, and I will put that on the side. Now your cylinder is complete and it's ready. Now for the manifold, I need one more. O ring, which is going to be a 141E, 2-141E, <clears throat> and it shows it right here off to the side with the arrow pointing right there, 2-141E, that'll complete the manifold of the adapter, and I'll set that off to the side so that they're ready. Now I'm going to do the sub-assembly of the piston valves. Now for the sub-assembly of the piston valves, it's going to call out in here. Uh, a 5052 EPR for the smaller valve spool, which is a valve spool 1, 11,038. Valve spool 2 is 11,039, the larger of them, and you get two of those. On the larger one, it's going to call out a different O-ring, a 5212. Find those and subassemble. Okay. Rip 
both of those. Now notice I have four of each. Two of them. Uh, pull my valve cell assembly here to the side. Again, I'm going to take some lubricant, lightly lubricate the O-rings. Set them off here to the side. Now I can use a pick. I got this one here dulled up at the end and it's round, rounded out so that I can insert these. And I'll take them and I'll put them inside. Push them around. Seated inside the groove, the O-ring groove of the valve spool. So you sort of just bend it a little bit, yep. pop it in there, and then now you're just using the tool to seat it in there so it's... That's it. That's it. Pretty simple. And then there's a, a groove in there where it's going to go, right? So you know... The O-ring groove, yep. Yeah. It goes right in the O-ring groove of uh, the valve spools. Push it down, seat it in. It's nice and smooth. It's got, got the lubricant on it. Now it's counterpart is up here in the valve cell. Now I got it all lubricated up and I'll set it down inside and what I'll do is I'll push this into the o-ring groove on this part moving around with my finger until I seat it inside the o-ring groove. Yeah. And I'll just continue until I get this one here completed. So you want to make sure you have a, you know, a dull tool so you don't uh, yeah, tear, tear it or rip it or anything. Yes. You don't want to pull holes in the seals otherwise they won't seal. And the smaller one. I use my finger now sometimes to get it started. Push down in there, and there it is. Once I get it seated inside of there, right here off to the side, you can see the O-ring and the O-ring groove. Mm -hmm. Right there. Okay. Now that I got that part done, I will set these off to the side, and I'll go to the valve spools. And I've got the valve spool. You can see the outline of the valve spool right here. This is the small one right here, the 11 million 38 valve spool. You can see the line here is pointing to an O-ring, a 2015E. Over here are the two larger valve spools. And you can see the o valve spool number, 11 million 39. And then on this side, it shows the picture of the 2017 EPR O-ring that goes on it. So, now if you have the seal kit, it'll be marked in the seal kit. I have the bags marked, so I'll pull those out of the bag here. Should be a 2015 and a 2017. There's 2015. Yeah, it makes it handy when you're uh, doing it just one step at a time, right? Oh, yes. Just 
to be just to make yeah. sure you don't miss anything and that you should try to stay organized, right? Well, you have to subassemble all of these. It's the only way it's going to go together. You'll see it as it goes along, but uh, the O-rings, yeah, a little bit at a time. On this case right here, we're only going to use one of these 2015s. I'm going to keep the rest of them off to the side because the rest of them go on here too. But this one will go on the small one. And I'll set it over here. And the other two, I'll lubricate them up. Get them set. And I got one more part to put some O-rings on. We'll assemble that piece. But you just seat these right in here. Just like that. It's a nice little groove for it. Yeah. And this one right here. Just put them in. Now they're all set. Okay. Then I'll pull these right here off to the side. Okay. Now on this here is the valve seat. This seems to work pretty good. The valve seat you can see is outlined right here. And I see the little point right here on the point. It's got an O-ring that sets on it right here. It's a 2103 for the small one. And then on this one here, the 2 is a 2105. This part is a uh, Valve seat 2, 11 million 13, and the small one is a valve seat 1, 11 million 12. They're all called out right here on the side here in your details list. And so what I'll do is I'll pull the O-rings for these. The 2103E. Normally the guys in the shafts are building these to get them in a big bag and just dump them out. <laughs> so these off to the side, then two one oh one fives. One here. Just uh, and then just can't can't forget to keep them lubed up first, they, right? They gotta lube them up. And then I'll take this one and I'll push it on. I use my fingernails a little bit to pop these on to the cones on the valve seats. Now once I get the cones on the valve seats. Now we got all of these set up here. Everything's set up here that uh now I'm gonna get this part here together. The piston assembly. And then the piston here, it shows you the piston outlined right here. Okay, and there's the pocket right here. These pockets right here are showing facing down, and on the top of this pocket here is an O-ring. This one here is calling for a 2013 EPR, and this one here is calling for Hard to see with this little one. It's a 2013 and a 2015. I don't see it over here calling it. And I know it's a 2015. They get five of them for it. So 
you take your 2015 and you get your 2013 APRs. There you go, putting some lube on it, of course. Just making sure that one here is just a little bit of lube on this. And then again, if you run out of lubricant, this is a brake valve adapter, and only a uh, brake fluid is used running through this brake adapter, so. If you run out of lubricant and you're in a bind, you use brake fluid only. No other lubricants to be used except for PST 407 from G-Man. Okay, so because it'll two cause of those... swelling to the, it causes swelling to the uh, O-rings. Once they swell, they start binding. And I'm noticing that two of those are the same size, and the one is smaller. Yes. Yes. The two are the 015s that I had setting off to the side here. Right. So you got a two, two 015s and then a 2013. And you just set them in here flat. And I'll see. They just sort of lay on top of that groove. Yep, and then kind of push it down flat into the groove so that it's flat all the way around. Okay. Okay, so now that one's ready right there. Now, I see right here that I have an Allen, a socket head Allen screw that goes up through one, two, into the third detail to hold this sub-assembly together. So, I have to pull the O-rings for these seals here, a 2014 and a 2015s, two 2015s. And this detail right here. Okay. So, what I'll do is I'll lubricate the top of this detail just a little lightly so that the o-rings that are going on this will seal and they'll still slide and I'll get a little bit of lubricant for the inside of this wall where the pistons are gonna slide so how often do you have to do maintenance on these? Uh, it depends on the plants. Uh, some plants will they'll rebuild uh, once a month. Some plants rebuild once every three months. Some plants build every other week. Or, right, it just depends know, on it, how it much use it gets, right? It just depends on what you can get out of them. Uh, some places, they've had an adapter they've used for a while, and they haven't rebuilt it for a long while, like three, four months. Wow. It just keeps running and running, you know, and they'll change uh, the main seals a lot. Some of the uh, main seals can get chewed up on, on, the, uh, on the reservoirs that they fit into, on the lines on the cars. Yeah, I had to make sure that was flat down in there. There. Now it's flat. Perfect. Okay. Now, I've got everything here, but I noticed looking at this part that there's an O-ring groove right here on the ceiling side that I'm going to seal on. And it is calling out for a 
205 O-ring. Right over here off to the side, it's calling out for nine 2005 O-rings. So that's one spot for the 005. I'll just set these right down here. And I'll lubricate this one and push it in here and have it ready. And that's setting right here on the top to seal. And now What I'll do is I'll take this piece here and I see here it's marked vacuum purge on one side and it's marked fluid on the other and I have these two large orifices facing me in this picture so I'll have them face me in this while I'm sitting here and I'm assembling. Now I'll take some lubricant, I'll put it on the shafts of the pistons, and I'll insert them. And of course they're snug, right? So. Well, I'm going to move them in a second here. I just get them all in there and make sure... Yeah. Now, I have them inside, I will be able to push them, and you can see that they slide. Yeah, once they catch that lubricant. Yep. They're sliding pretty freely. No binding. I can move them back and forth with my fingers easily. So I know that they should work and I can feel a little bit of friction on them so they should be sealing. So now I got the two larger ones facing me. That's where you come out with the springs. Now on this side right here, oh, it's just calling the number. Wow. On the other prints, it tells me uh, the larger, well, the larger spring goes on the vacuum side. I know that. But usually it calls it out on here. The 7165 is the larger spring. It's larger than the 71673. So the larger spring is on the vacuum side. The smaller spring is on the fluid side. Here's the vacuum side larger spring I put on the vacuum side. The scavenge spring won't fit on the other two so it can only go on one spot. And you don't need to lubricate those springs do you? I already lubricated the shafts. Right so, that's, so the springs yep. are okay. Yep the springs will be fine. I mean you can if you want to you can put a little bit on there, might help with uh, the movement. Once I get those on, I then put the valve glands on. Now the valve glands, you'll notice, have some holes on the side. It helps if you take a paper clip for this part. You open the paper clip like this. This is just a little trick of getting these together easier. And you take the hole, and you can see these two flats right here. There's a flat 
and there's a flat and it makes like an arrow and you point that arrow into the center between the two slots next to it and it'll line these holes up with that hole so you can push the spring down and you can put paper clip in there the clip in it to hold it down oh nice and you can do that all the way around and that's why you need three paper clips. Yep. And you do that right there. And now, why you got the paper clips in? When you're putting those in and pushing them down, you'll notice there are O-ring grooves right here on the top. You have four of them on this particular adapter. They take the 2-005 EPR O-rings, lubricate them up, just stick them in there. And make sure that they're down flat. Doesn't take a lot so that they don't fall out. When you're ready to take this piece, you can take a little bit of lubricant right here uh, over the orifices that match these these holes and the small hole will match the small hole and you just put it in like blocks and just make sure that when you do that the, those little rings don't fall out well they're they've got the grease on them so they won't fall out yeah, so yeah and you just set it there get it ready I'm going to get my screws ready here. Okay. And you can see on the, the print it's calling out for an M3 by 45 long with the high collar lock washer. Which these are the 45s, and I'll just match up the lock washers, get them ready. Okay, now get my Allen wrench here. Now I'm going to take these valve seats and I'm going to turn them up. And what I do is I put them down right there on the hole and I slide them over. And they just seat right down. As you can see the O-ring right here is going to seat right here inside that valve spool and that's what opens and closes for your fluid and your vacuum so it's important that they're lubricated pretty good now I'll put them down inside of here and I'll put a little bit of grease right here and then I'll take and I'll put a little bit of grease on the sides of these 45s on the valve seats. 
is I'm going to put corresponding O-rings to seal on the, the valve seats. So they're right here. It's showing a 2014 EPR right there at the end of that little valve seat right here. And it's showing a 2015 right under this valve seat, which I need two more of those, which I have my two left over here. Make sure they're lubricated. Put them on. You want them lubricated. I make sure this side's lubricated. That side's lubricated. Now I'll get my 214 out. And it's right here. Because there's only one of those. Yep, that's the one. And you'll notice it is just a little bit smaller than the 2015. Kind of sticking because of the lubricant. Now I'll lubricate them up. Pretty good. Just put on here. And then, what I'll do is I'll take my screws, I'll stick them in the screw slots with the lock washers on. And I'm going to turn this with the two large orifices facing me again. Okay? Now, there's two ways to tell which how you got this on right. You have an O-ring right here next to this screw. There's an orifice right here that matches that O-ring and it's next to the screw hole. So you can line it up with that one. Then you can make sure these two orifices match over the top of the two large. Then you take and you put them in the holes. Once you get it down, you squeeze down to seat the O-rings. Then you tighten your screws. Once you get it Loosely tightened. You can pull you out can your pull paper out clips. Your paper clips. Then you want to do a couple turns, a couple turns, like if you were putting on a, a spare tire, changing a flat. Just go around and equally uh, tighten it. So it'll equally flatten the O rings and spread them down so that they seat properly and they don't get pinched, causing the uh, leaks or vacuum leaks, or even fluid leaks. Now once I get them hand tight, I will then take and do like a quarter turn. Just to be sure, and just give it a little nudge, not too tight to break the screw, but enough for it to feel sealed. Because everything's got to press down now on the seals throughout this whole assembly. I'm squashing down all my seals right here on the gland inside the piston. My seals right here inside are going around the, the valve spools and I'm pressing my valve spool down on the seals on this valve seat 
and I'm pressing the seal onto the valve seat and flattening it right in here to help seal there. Now when this moves up and down and opens and closes, it's a spring close and it's an air open. And it's what allows your fluid to come through here and fill. And once I get that assembly done, I look for the O-ring that goes right here on the outside of this piece. It's called out as a 2013. And I still have a couple more in the bag here. So now I can set my 2013s off to the side. And I'll lubricate them up. I'll take the one and I'm going to stick it on this piece here for its seal. Now I know there's going to be seals going over these orifices, so I'll put a little bit of lubricant right there. Notice I'm not gunking it on real thick, but I'm putting enough to where it's going to get up pretty decent seal and it's going to have enough for if uh, the o-ring slides. Now I'll grab the guide. The guide is shown in the picture right here. Is this piece right here on the end. That's going to hold your main seal. Okay and the guide's listed right here as an 11 million 1301. And that's pretty much what changes this adapter mostly to what you know what um reservoir it's gonna fit on in what car. Okay now this one is calling out for a 2011, two of them on the two main orifices, and then it's calling out a main seal right here of a 2218. So I'll pull those out, put them on before I assemble. Here's my 2218. And here's the two one one es Put the 2011 ease in right here. <laughs> and now I'll just lubricate these a little bit on the top. And then I'll lubricate this pocket right here that's going to go over the top of this o ring. Now, it's held on with a screw, socket head cap screw, I'm 3 by 15 with the high collar lock washers. You got my I'm 3 by 15s, and my M3 high collar lock washers. And then I'll complete the piston. Assembly. Now I got the two main orifices facing me, and these two here. So just make sure they match up. Mm-hmm. Well, the way they designed it is, their screws are in a V, 
and there's the V and it's only one way that it'll go on with the screws matching just like that Screw those down. Now after I cleaned off all the parts, I kind of went over them real quick with a, a file and kind of deburred them a little bit so there weren't any sharp burrs hanging up or anything that might get in the way or cut or smash an o-ring or keep everything from being flat and I'll go around this just like if I was doing a changing a flat on a car and tighten up the lug nuts one at a time all the way around There's one right there. So why'd you loosen that one and take it back off? Hmm? It had a lock washer stuck to it right here on the inside. Oh. So when I put it on, it had two. <laughs> oh, and well. I noticed it while I was screwing it on. I mean, it... hey, there's a, a lesson. Just right there. stay aware and, you know, it looked like a... The screw was a little bit higher than the others, and I'm like, what? <laughs> ah, well, there good. it is. That's yeah. why. Yeah. Okay, and so these here are all... And that may or may not have, what, had an effect on the mm -hmm. function of it, but you never know, right? It might have had an effect because if it's sticking up right here by this O-ring, it's your main seal right there. It's going to mm -hmm. hit it. As you can see, it's going to hit if it's sticking up a little bit higher right there on that flat. All right. So I noticed it was sticking up a little bit higher, and it's like, uh, yeah, I'm going to take it off and see what's going on here. It had a, a washer stuck on the inside. Now I put your main seal, and that's your assembly. Now if I was sitting at a bench, I could take an airline, and I could... Use a little switch, opening and closing my airline, and I could shuttle all the valves in here, and I'd be able to hear them shuttle. Or I'd be able to put my hand over here and feel them, because uh, the spring would push back, and the spring pocket air would flow back out here on the sides, and I would feel them moving. You know, that would be like a simple bench test you could do to make sure everything's moving in here. Okay. I, have, I have no air here, so. Okay, now that I've got that there, what I'll do now is I'll get the O-rings for here and for here. That completes that sub-assembly for the piston sub-assembly. Now right here is this piston right here and you can see that it has an o-ring right here and it's calling out for a 2131 the next one up from the 2130s that we put in earlier so I'll pull that 2131 out and that one's going to go on the outside and I'll leave that up Once I get that, I'm going to go on right here where I push it out with my fingers, and I can just push it on. Nice groove there for that, too. Yep. Now, I'll take and I'll put some 
lubricant right up on this top piece because this top piece is what's going to be sliding through this o-ring right here and this o-ring right here now the o-ring I just put on is what is going to be sliding on the inside of here this o-ring right here will be sliding right on here so I make sure again that that's lubed up in there. Once I do that, I can take this piece, come over the top, and slide on. Okay. Now I can make sure with my hands that I'm sliding pretty good because this is going to be your clamp and unclamp in uh, part of your lock system on the adapter and it moved pretty good so now that piece is assembled now I'm going to take the remaining o-rings looks like I got a couple in here that are called out on this print that don't belong in here But they were part of the seal kits a long time ago, and you're just going to have to set them off to the side and not use them. Uh, comes out up here for a, a 2 010, a 2007, a 2013. And your 205s for the top right here. So I'll put those in. Here's my 205s. Here's the last of the 2013s. And that one goes in the middle. Yep. Right. Get us in there. Now make sure those are. Now, now that I got those in, you'll see the reason that I come over the top right here on the bottom and I put some lubricant on the flat where the O-rings are going to seal. It's, it'll help them seal. When it flattens it out, it'll help it like spread out. Okay, so now that I got that, I'm going to now these are leftover seals that will probably come in a seal kit because they're called out on here. One of the seals is actually a seal that's inside of a, a fitting up here that doesn't get changed. All right, it's up here in the top. It gets pressed in. And that seal usually stays in there and it doesn't wear out. It's used for the hoses. It gets a nylon tubing that gets pushed in and out and in and out of there. So that one you can't change, All right? This other O-ring, we'll use that. And the 109 is an O-ring that they used to have for an old fitting that used to go on here that doesn't go in there anymore. So that'll be off to the side. If you get a seal kit like this, 
But if you get a regular seal kit that comes in a container, it won't come in it. The newer kits don't have it. So you don't have to worry about, oh no, did I miss an O-ring? You get a couple left, you didn't. All right, so this is off to the side now. That's off to the side. This one here is the last one, the 309, which is a 3903 here. And it's going to go on your bleed fitting. It goes around it just like a, a regular 97 degree or 70 degree fitting. That's right here. And now I'll lubricate that up a little bit. And I'll put that on here. Because it usually goes right here on the top. And this will usually go right here on the top where it's got an o ring fitting orifice. And I don't put that in until last because I'm going to need this flat to push down on. Now, I'm going to make sure I got this looped around here. And I'm going to make sure I got this looped once more right in here. And I'm going to push this on here. And I'll pull it off and it, you see how it comes off and slides easy. That's part of your lock and clamp system, so it's got to move freely. Then, I'm going to keep the two large orifices facing me. Put a little bit around your spring. You don't have to put a lot. It's just going to slide right here on top of the outside of that cylinder. Then I'm going to take my jaws and put them right here and see how I got them hooked on the O-ring and put them in the groove there and you can see how they stay hooked up inside. I'm going to go all the way around. And they basically just go right next to each other, right? That's it. You get that hook, I just hook it right up on the O-ring. And I turn it. It's, on this particular adapter, it's getting 12 jaws. So I'll fill all 12 spaces. And now I'm ready to finish assembly. Now, I'm going to come on here to the edge of the table where it's stronger. It's got the leg right there because I have to push down on this. All right, I get my This one here is calling out up here for an M4 by 25 socketed cap screw with uh, the lock washers. And I put the lock washers on. And how I do it is I put one inside this first hole here. And I get my Allen wrench. What I'm going to do is I'm going to line this screw up with this hole right here. And I will face it all towards me. I will push down.
and then you're actually holding it down, compressing the spring, right? Yeah. Oh, I was off. So could this sometimes just be like a two-man operation where you want somebody to hold it down? Or can you just always handle it by yourself? I've always done it by myself. There you go. There it is. Then you put the other two screws in. And again, I'm like, a, like I'm putting on a, changing a flat tire. I'm going to go around them so that everything seats. sure that they're tight so I'll use a little crescent and I'll give it a little bit more of a tug turn on the M4s because they're a little bit bigger and I'll make sure that everything is seated on the adapter and uh, that's pretty much the assembly except for this completes it that just screws right on the top. Yep. And what I'm going to do is when I screw it in, I want to make sure that I don't see the O-ring kind of protruding out the side as I tighten it up. But then it slips on in there. So it should mount and nice, and light and, nice and flush on the top, yep. right? Yeah. Now... This off just a little bit. In my hands, I should be able to pull the sleeve down over the jaws. My hand. Let me save, save the. And it's moving freely. It's not sticking. When I originally got the adapters in for repair, I couldn't do this. Now that should run pretty good. And now I'm ready to uh, run it out. And that's how you assemble it. All right. Thanks, Bill.